Well, hey, thanks for coming by the Head First Fishing Channel. Thanks for coming by St. Pete Fishing Outfitters. It's Wednesday, right about 6 o'clock p.m., and we're here with Mr. Cliff Nye, the fly tying guru here at the shop. It's freestyle night for fly tying, and we got some people coming in the store, and we're gonna tie all kinds of different flies. We're also gonna go through a tutorial of a very popular fly called the Schmino. Cliff, tell us a little bit about what you got going on this evening. Well, freestyle nights basically is, you know, our students come in, they can tie whatever fly they they want to tie. They supply their own materials on, on a freestyle night. And I'm here to lend uh, technical assistance if there's something they aren't sure how to accomplish. Uh, I, I will also be instructing some, some of our newer students how to tie a schmino. It's an extremely easy easy fly to tie yet a highly effective fly in this area. It was developed by uh, by Norm Ziegler from Sanibel Island a number of years ago. It's uh, it's become famous in its own right. It'll work on redfish, trout, snook, uh, largemouth bass, crappie, stripers, and I had a guy in the shop last year from uh, Colorado tell me he had uh, you know, the last rainbow he caught in Colorado was uh, was a caught on a crystal schminnow. Wow, that's I, pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, it's like the dream fly. If I only had <laughs> one fly, what would it be? But it, it is a highly effective fly, and it's extremely easy to tie. Uh, even our newest students will be able to take their fly home tonight and fish it tomorrow if they choose to do so. so that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you come on to the class, you're going to learn some favorites, some standbys, and you're also going to be able to let your creativity fly. So if you get the chance, come by the store Wednesdays at 6 p.m., learn a little bit about building flies, and then see what you can come up with. You never know. You might have the next winner that works everywhere. You never know what can happen. One of the most enjoyable things we do is, uh, is uh, two evenings during the month we actually teach patterns and then uh, we have a freestyle night and and the last Wednesday of the month is always competition night now when I say competition this is a fun thing uh, because the only thing the students are allowed to tie with are the materials I provide and the last competition night we had for example I put one black and one white sneaker in the middle of the table and that was all they were allowed to use Whoa. Daniel the store manager and I judge them we give prizes away, but but the most amazing thing is is how how uh, creative people are able to be with a limited amount of resource there to come up with a fishable fly. Yeah. So, uh, and that that is just a fun night. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm excited. Well, uh, we won't keep you any longer. Let's go ahead and get cracking on this fly tying. First thing I want you to do is take your bobbin. This is your bobbin. This is this is what helps you put thread on your hook. What you're going to do is you're going to start start your thread on the hook, and what you want to do is come around a couple of times, draw your thread off to the side to capture it. Come all the way down to the bend of your hook, snip it, and then work. I want you to come back to about three quarters of the way to the eye of the hook. And then what you're going to do is take a bunch of wraps and in essence make a ball because we need something to get our eyes. All right. Right. You can put lead dumbbell eyes on here if you want your fly to sink for faster and further. Right. But tonight we are going to use bead chain and you're going to hold that bead chain on your hook. All right, right in front of that ball, right up against that ball, and you're going to take a bunch of wraps just like this. We aren't going to figure eight it yet. All right, go ahead and straighten your eyes and hold them where you want them, and then wrap the other way. Come across the other way. So now you've got your eyes. Good. 
Now, what you're going to do is you're going to figure eight your knives. And when I say figure eight, you're going to come over like this and back like that. Over like that and back. So you're figure eighting. Perfect. Okay, after you've done that a half a dozen times, I just want you to come around your eyes a couple times like this. And then wrap all the way back to the bend of the hook again. You're going to take your marabou. This is marabou. And you want your tail to be about one and a half times the body of the fly, the body starting behind the eyes to the bend of the hook. You're going to want that to be about one, one and a half times. All right, so you're going to hold this and you're going to clip it. How you doing? And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold it on top of your hook. You're going to keep that pinched. Hold it on top of your hook and bring your thread over the top of the hook. You're, basically what you're going to do is a relatively loose wrap and then a nice tight wrap over it. and you're going to wrap all of that in like that. Okay. Now we're going to build the body of your fly. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold this right behind the eyes and you're going to wrap over. You're going to wrap that onto your hook. Watch me though because what I do is I is I keep it relatively tight on top of the hook that as I get about halfway down, I let the thread start pulling this underneath the hook. You see how, how, that sh how that chenille now is no longer on top of the hook? Because that's where I want to start my wrap from. Once you get that wrapped up, you can come all the way back to your eyes, come through your eyes, and up towards the eye of the hook. Now, if you've ever seen a fish or anything else, they have it. They're they're relatively narrow at the tail and their body thickens as it comes up towards the eyes and, and one of the ways to accomplish that is you're going to wrap, make sure you maintain constant pressure on it, and pull it tight, you're going to go forward two, back one and then you're going to wrap forward two, back one, one, two, back one. One, two, back one, one, two, and then when you get to the end you're going to want to come through the eyes and you're going to figure eight it. And then you're going to take your thread and you're going to capture it. Normally three or four wraps will capture it. So go ahead and cut this little piece off that's hanging. Be careful not to snip your thread. Go ahead and wrap the head of your fly which is just covering that shank with Alright, everybody's, everybody's uh, downfall or every the hardest thing to teach people to do uh, is to use a whip finisher. I like using a whip finisher on smaller flies because I think you get more control and you tie a neater head. You on you know on larger flies you can half hitch it. You can you can throw half hitches in. But on but on smaller flies it's just easier if you know how to use a whip finisher. Grab your thread, grab your thread with the hook, bring this up, allow the whip finisher to rotate in your hand, and then you just whip finish.
snip your thread. Okay, I lost you. <laughs> now the fun part. Grab your tail. All right, when you have about one and a half, take it and make a straight cut. And that's what gives it that little. There is Mr. Ziegler's fly. Now ours is a little bit bigger because of the hook size, but there's our fly. Let's see yours. What's that called? Schmino. Not too bad for your mm -hmm. first fly yeah, ever, huh? Not, yeah. All right, now all you got to do is go and fish it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, thank you. And that's basically how you tie a schminnel. I hope you've enjoyed this look into our fly tying class we have every Wednesday. Next time it's going to be the competition night. So if you want to get into fly tying, you got to come by and see what you can do. Hey, thanks for coming by St. Pete Fishing Outfitters. Thanks for coming by Head First Fishing. I'll see you next time.